too big to believe. China's $62 billion South-North Water Transfer Project. If you ever want to see some of the world's biggest mega projects today, get yourself to China. You'll be thrilled to witness them in numbers. The South to North Water Diversion Project in China is the largest of its kind ever undertaken. This project involves drawing water from southern rivers and supplying it to the dry north. This massive scheme has already taken 50 years from conception to commencement and is expected to take almost as long to construct. Planned for completion in 2050, it will eventually divert 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually to the population centers of the drier north. When finished, the work will link China's four main rivers, the Yangtze, Yellow River, Huaihe, and Haihe, and requires the construction of three diversion routes, stretching south to north across the eastern, central, and western parts of the country. The complete project is expected to cost $62 billion, more than twice as much as the country's controversial Three Gorges Dam. Northern China has long been a center of population, industry, and agriculture. With all three growing apace, the per capita share of the region's limited water resources has inevitably kept falling. Historically, this has led to the over-exploitation of groundwater, often supplying urban and industrial development at the expense of agriculture, leading to severe water shortages in rural areas. Additionally, land subsidence and the region's frequent sandstorms have also been linked to the excessive use of groundwater. And just who came up with this idea and why? Today, China is confronting acute scarcity in its national water supply. Geographically, China's water resources are unevenly distributed, with northern China's water availability per person only a fraction of that in the rainy south. The country's massive population of more than 1.3 billion, a third of which is concentrated in the relatively dry Huanghuai High River basins of North China, is a major factor in China's low per capita water availability. Low water productivity, or the amount of water required per unit of yield, particularly in agriculture, but also in China's booming industrial and energy sectors, has also played a key role in exacerbating the country's water scarcity. Climate change is disrupting weather patterns and accelerating the evaporation of glaciers, further diminishing surface water supplies. In addition, increasingly widespread pollution from industrial and domestic wastewater discharges of China's surface water resources and 90% of China's rivers near urban areas has not only taken a toll on human health, but also has contributed to shortages that have led to rising dependence on groundwater. A consequence has been that critical rivers, lakes, and wetlands are drying up. Water table levels also are falling, causing land subsidence in some areas. Water scarcity is already doing measurable harm to China's economic productivity, with reduced river flows affecting hydropower generation and limiting the expansion of water-dependent industries, from coal mining and petroleum refining to steel production to higher tech industries such as semiconductors. All are increasingly constrained by the lack of water. Notably, most of China's coal resources are in the arid north, and some of China's largest coal reserves remain untapped due largely to water shortages. The late chairman Mao Zedong first proposed the idea of the diversion project in 1952, intending the ambitious scheme to ease the growing water shortages in the cities of Beijing and Tianjin, and the northern provinces of Hebei, Henan, and Shandong. On the 23rd of August 2002, 50 years later, after extensive research, planning, and discussion, the project was approved by the state council, and work began on the east route of the project in December, construction commencing on the central route a year later. A special limited liability company has been created to cover the construction, operation, and maintenance of the main project, with each province being required to set up a water supply company to manage the local administration and infrastructure elements. The eastern route was expected to supply Shandong province and the northern part of Jiangsu during 2007, a year ahead of the original schedule, linking Shandong with the Yangtze River and bringing water north to the the Huanghuai High Plain via the Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal, but was delayed. Diverted from a major branch of the Yangtze River near Yangtze City, the water will travel along existing river channels to the Weishang Mountains of Shandong before crossing the Yellow River via a tunnel and flowing to Tianjin. The finished diversion will be slightly over 1,155 kilometers long and involves the construction of 23 pumping stations with an installed capacity of 453.7 megawatts in the first stage alone to complement the seven existing ones, which will themselves be rehabilitated and upgraded. This part of the project will also include nearly nine kilometers of tunnels from the outlet of Dongping Lake 
to the inlet of the Wayland Canal, including a 634-meter-long siphon section, together with two 9.3-meter diameter horizontal tunnels 70 meters under the Huang He Riverbed. Several key projects of the eastern route have been completed. However, the work on the route was delayed due to farm and industrial pollution that endangered the quality of water. This gigantic project is being done in phases. Construction of the central route began in December 2003. It was planned to be finished before the commencement of the Beijing Olympic Games in August 2008 to provide Beijing with drinking water. However, by September 2008, only 307 kilometers of the central route had been completed. The central route diverts water from the Danjiangku Reservoir on the Han River via new canals near the west edge of the Huanghuai Hai Plain to flow through the Henan and Hebei provinces to Beijing, a diversion route totaling some 1,267 kilometers in length. The nearby city of Tianjin will also draw water from the trunk line near Zushui in Hebei province. Initially designed to transfer 9.5 billion cubic meters of water, by 2030, some 13 to 14 billion cubic meters will flow along this system. Shocking numbers, right? Declining reserves in the Danjiangku Reservoir have led to the suggestion of drawing water from the Three Gorges Reservoir to bolster the supply and meet the demands of this part of the project. And by the way, if you haven't watched our video about the Three Gorges Dam, the link is added in the description below. Check it out, another amazing Chinese mega project. Moving on, the water from the Han River is yet to come through the completed canal. However, water in the canal now flows from various Hebei province reservoirs. The central route project was scheduled for completion by 2010, but was postponed to 2014 due to environmental concerns and for the expansion of the Danjiangku Reservoir in the route. It was completed a year later. Then there is the western route of water diversion. Construction of the western route, which involves working on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, between 3,000 and 5,000 meters above sea level was scheduled to begin in 2010 and would involve overcoming some major engineering and climactic challenges. Once completed in 2050, the project will bring 4 billion cubic meters of water from three tributaries of the Yangtze, the Tongjin, Yelong, and Dadu rivers, nearly 500 kilometers across the Bayankala Mountains and then on to northwest China. At a symposium in Beijing in 2006, Officials from the Yellow River Water Resources Committee called for preparatory steps to be taken swiftly to hasten the construction of this project route. It has been predicted that an additional 4.5 billion cubic meters of water will be required by 2030 to maintain economic growth in the region with its booming population and major construction and development projects. Construction costs of the eastern and central routes are estimated to be 254.6 billion won, approximately $37.44 billion. China reserved 53.87 billion won, about $7.9 billion for the South to North Water Diversion Project. Of the 53.87 billion won, the central government budgeted 15.42 billion, special funds and treasury bonds from the central government account for 10.65 billion won, and local governments are funding 7.99 billion won. Loans will contribute 19.81 billion won to the project. The construction costs of the project have drastically changed due to hikes in commodity prices and changes in the national policy and investment structures of the project. Around 30.48 billion won of the earmarked amount has been spent on the construction of eastern and central routes. Like China's other mega project, the Three Gorges Dam, the diversion scheme has provoked many environmental concerns, principally regarding the loss of antiquities, the displacement of people, and the destruction of pasture land. That aside, plans for further industrialization along the project routes pose a serious risk of pollution to the diverted water. To help counter this threat, the Chinese government has earmarked just over $80 million for Zhengdu, Huion, Suquian, and Zuzu in the east of Jiangsu province to build treatment facilities, though estimates suggest the actual cost is more than double this figure. Overall, around 260 projects have been instigated to reduce pollution and help ensure that water in the areas of the diversion project will meet minimum drinking standards. The South to North Water Transfer Project Company is the project owner, with pre-project construction work done by Hanjiang Water Resources and Hydropower. Project management is being performed by the State Development and Planning Commission, the Ministry of Water Resources, the Ministry of Construction, the State Environment Protection Administration, 
and China International Engineering Consultant Corporation. GCW Consulting are providing infrastructure development plans. Haihe Water Resources Commission and Tianjin Hydroelectric Investigation and Design Institute are responsible for the design and planning for the Eastern Route, Chanjiang Water Resources Commission for the Middle Route, and the Yellow River Conservancy Commission for the Western Route. Construction is being done by Hanjiang Water Resources and Hydropower on the Eastern Route, and Danjiangku Water Resources and Hydroelectric are building the Middle Route. Additionally, Many of the country's ministries, organizations, and institutes were also involved during the 50 years of extensive planning and research to turn Mao's initial concept into the current scheme of work. So there you have it. Do you think this massive project will cure China's persistent water problems? Let us know in the comments section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.